Coming up next, in-depth high school coverage with highlights from all over our state next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. The strength of the Southeast. Hooten's Arkansas Football with high school highlights brought to you by Arkansas. in this, this championship. Lots of excitement early for homecoming in Cersei Friday night. Adam Rutledge returned the opening kickoff into Valonia territory. Then, steady, Freddie Langston throws to Austin Branscombe. That sets up Cersei for this touchdown by Rutledge from one yard out. Art Bell kicked the extra point, and Cersei was up 7 to nothing early. But Bologna would answer on the ensuing kickoff. It's junior Shane Cawthon right up the middle. Hey, Cersei special teams will get you beat in the playoffs. Cawthon goes all the way for the touchdown, and it's 7 to 7. A little later in the first quarter, here's Blaine Mallett for Cersei taking the handoff, comes right at you, then cuts up field. It's a 53-yard gain for the Lions. That set up another touchdown from Steady Freddy, the quarterback keeper around the left end. It's a 24-yard touchdown. That puts Cersei up 14-7, and the Lions go on to clinch the West number two playoff spot. That means the Lions will be at home the next two weeks. Final score, Cersei 35, Bologna 25. 
Ashdown was in Piercy Friday night for a key game in the Southwest Conference race. Lake Hamilton led 7-0 early when Lake Hamilton's Clarence Kelly picks off Ashdown's Cody Sheridan and returns it down to the 20-yard line. Kelly had a big game on both sides of the ball. A little later, it's Lake Hamilton's big fullback. That's Jason Green rumbling for a 20-yard pickup. Then Kelly throws to Jason Monroe for the score, and Lake Hamilton's up 14-0. Lake Hamilton led 28-0 at the half and celebrates homecoming by clinching a number one playoff seed. Lake Hamilton kicks Ash down 42-8. On KOTN 1490 AM in Pine Bluff and KPBQ 101.3, the home stations of Dumas Bobcat football. That's Ed Lee and Dwight Lambert. Ed is the play-by-play -play guy for Watson Chapel, and Dwight handles the Dumas broadcast. But they both work for Delta Radio Network, so Friday night they shared play-by-play -play duties. When the Bobcats and Wildcats got together, this was a mismatch, though. Dumas dressed just 29 players. Watson Chapel had 22 seniors. And Chapel sent a message early. On the opening kickoff, Dumas's Alvin Ray gets walloped by Chapel's David Henderson. Of course, Chapel's defense is always stingy. Dumas quarterback McKinnon Shea hands off to Marshedron Everett. That's an eight-yard gain for Dumas, but that's about as big a play as the Bobcats would make all night. Meanwhile, Chapel fullback Jeremy Hayes first the Wildcats' first scoring drive. Jeremy comes right at you for a 15-yard pickup. Then it's Marquise Barnes for 12 yards up the middle. Chapel is loaded with running backs. They would cap the drive early in the second quarter when Keith Scott scores from three yards out. Junior kicker Drew Davis hits the extra point, and Watson Chapel goes on to win with ease over Dumas, 50 to nothing. Chapel needs to win this week and hope West Helena can beat Stuttgart for the Wildcats to win the Southeast Conference Championship. Of course, Stuttgart controls its own destiny. The Rice Birds can earn at least a share of the Southeast Championship and number one playoff seed by winning at West Helena this week. Friday night, the Rice Birds played host to Whitehall, and that's Mike Moss, voice of the Bulldogs. First score, Josh Keith gets to the 43-yard line of Whitehall. Stuttgart leads 13-7 late in the third quarter when sophomore quarterback Chris Lambers fumbles, spotting for the first down, and Whitehall's Quinton Barnes recovers. Then Bulldog senior running back Jonathan Kendall takes it 15 yards to near midfield. But Stuttgart's defense was tough most of the night. Senior in Larry Tompkins sacks quarterback Joe Welch. That's a five-yard loss. Then on fourth down, it's Tompkins again stuffing the Bulldog. Stuttgart tallied 333 yards offense on the night. Number six, Darrell Williams. He helped the Riceburg running game, scoring from 13 yards out right here. And Keon Blood had another big night. Keon finished with 130 yards and the Rice Birds improved to 7-2 and two on the year with a 26-7 win over Whitehall. The Class 4A poll stays pretty much the same. The top eight teams are all the same in Hooton's Arkansas football poll. Osceola, Harrison, Wynn, Lake Hamilton, Alma. Searcy clinched the number two playoff spot with their win and Morrillton's loss on Friday. Newport is number seven, then it's Watson Chapel. West Helena has a big showdown with number 10 Stuttgart this week. Greenwood is number 11, up four spots after the win at Morrillton. Then it's Whitehall, Morrillton, Magnolia, and Batesville. Hope is number 16, followed by Ashdown, Monticello, and Arkadelphia. And Malvern battles Arkadelphia for a trip to the playoffs this week. Coming up next, to look at Class 3A, including Friday night's matchup between the Nashville Scrappers and the Queen Leopards. You know me. We had a little meeting in here a while ago. Sophomores and juniors. We all said to a man that we were going to play that much over our head. Juniors and sophomores. Well, you seniors. We're going to play that much over our head for you tonight, guys. Last regular season game on the hill. Just so happens it happens to be D. Queen. Just so happens a lot riding on the ball game. But that doesn't make any difference for you seniors. I know you're going to go out there and give the effort. Play it up a notch because it's the last one. We're going to help you guys. We're going to help you. Right, juniors and sophomores? Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Seniors, you chip in and do your part. The rest of us are going to do ours. We'll be fine. That's all you can ask yourself to do is to do your very best, lift it up a notch, 
and we'll be fine. That's Get Nashville coach up. Billy Laird, one of Arkansas's premier high school coaches, getting his scrappers ready for the DeQueen Leopards on the hill in Nashville. On the first play from scrimmage, DeQueen's sophomore quarterback, Brian McClellan, pitches to junior Richard Bell. Then McClellan throws the quick out to junior Jason Parson. Parson makes the nifty spin move for extra yardage before Nashville's Jamone Johnson gets a hold of a shirt tail. But two plays later, the Leopards are forced to punt, and Nashville's Willie Scott goes 62 yards. But this one's not going to count. The Scrappers get called for the clip on the kick, and it'll bring it back. That gives the Queen's defense a chance to shine. The Leopards were stingy on defense when they made it to the state finals last year, and the Queen D is solid again. Look at them. Jimmy Mobbs, Adam Renson, Roland Jones, and Sylvester Hopkins swarmed to the ball. And this was a defensive struggle all the way. Very few offensive highlights for either team. Bell fights hard for nine yards on this play. He would finish with 105 yards on the night. But watch Nashville's defense hold on fourth and three. It's Shelton Jefferson, Trevell Green, and Miles McCullough stuffing the Leopards. Neither team would score until Nashville quarterback Brian Pope threw a 36-yard touchdown pass to Ace Howard with 11 seconds left in the game, and the Scrappers stop the Queen. Both of these teams will be tough in the playoffs. Final score, Nashville 7, the Queen 0. The biggest game in the 5 AAA Conference Friday night was Robinson against Pulaski Academy. On PA's first possession, the Bruins face third and 25, but convert when Isaac Smith throws to P.J. Hickey for a 52-yard gain. P.J. would go on to finish with 107 yards receiving and kick a couple of field goals. Blake Pison scored the Bruins' first touchdown on this one-yard run. Blake would finish with 154 yards and four scores on the night. And Pulaski Academy secures a number one playoff seed and will play at home as long as it wins in postseason play. The Bruins rip Robinson 41-16. In another important 5 AAA conference matchup, BB was at Oak Grove. BB running back Nick Bradley changed jersey numbers on us this week. He was still easy for us to find, just hard for Oak Grove to catch. Nick would finish with 223 yards and five touchdowns tonight, including this 22-yard touchdown run that put the Badgers up 37-6 in the third quarter. Oak Grove made a little run in the second half, though. Antoine Smitty gets it to Kevin Strong for a big game, and that sets up this nifty halfback pass from Strong to Chris Yeager. But the Badgers would hold on to win. Final score, BB 44, Oak Grove 26. In a big six AAA matchup, Mariana was in Lone Oak Friday night to do battle with the Jackrabbits, and we pick up the action with Lone Oak clinging to a 17-14 lead late in the third quarter. That's when Mariana's quarterback, Chris Richardson, pitches to Mario Wilson for the big game. Then look at Richardson, scrambling, scrambling. Then he passes. That's Irvin Hill, who had a huge night. Irvin breaks one tackle, and it's another nice game for Mariana. But on the next play, Lone Oak's Chad Wise takes it away from Wilson for the Lone Oak interception. But the Rabbits made plenty of mistakes, too. The snap on the punt goes over Zaki Wadud's head, and it's a safety for Mariana. That cuts the lead to one point. Then Mariana would take over in the fourth quarter. Chris Richardson, good running again, and that sets up this short touchdown run by Mario Mario. Wilson gets into the end zone, and Mariana is up 22-17 with six minutes left. Lone Oak tries to rally, but there he is again. Irvin Hill steps in front of Wadud's pass. It's his third interception of the night. Nobody's going to catch him, and Mariana goes on to win. Final score, Trojans 29, Lone Oak 17. It was really my defensive line linebackers giving the quarterback a hard time to throw the ball. When he threw it, I was stepping up there. What were you expecting on that play? We knew they was going to come with the pass. Guess we were just ready. We had prepared for it all week. What did it feel like going into that end zone? Oh, happy. Yeah. Happy. They just came back and fought hard. You know, they did the things that they had to do in order to try to get a piece of, uh, get a piece of, the, uh, of the playoffs. And uh, we just, you know, they just didn't die. They didn't die. They didn't give up. And here is the AAA top 20 from Hooton's Arkansas football. The McGee Owls, Boonville Bearcats, and Highland Rebels are all undefeated. Then it's Nashville and Star City. Ozark is number six. Brinkley drops five spots after suffering its first loss of the year to Hughes on Friday. Then it's Gosnell, and Mariana is up seven spots after rallying to win at Lone Oak Friday. The second 10 starts with Rivercrest, Fort Ice to Queen. Dollar Way can clinch a share of the conference title with a win over Lone Oak this week. Pulaski Academy is number 17 this week, followed by Clarksville, Truman. Now more high school highlights brought to you by First Security Bank Corps on Newton's Arkansas football. You know, they made a big deal out of this ball game. Well, it is a big deal because it's, a, it's home for us and it's winning streaks 
that we have. You understand that? Yes, sir. Hey, this is what you play football for right here. These games here. Right, These games. Let's go, fellas. Not the games that you go out there and know that you got the game won. And this is our challenge right here. I mean, we've got something that they want. We already got at least a share of this 5AA championship, but we don't want to share it with nobody. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Don't bring no children. That's right. That's Carlisle coach James Clayton. His team had not lost a conference game at home since 1989 until Friday night when rival Harding Academy came to town. Third play of the game, Harding's Mark Watson finds cool hands. Luke Anderson in stride across the middle. Take a good look at Luke. He goes 70 yards for the score. Later, Carlisle comes back when quarterback John Parker hands off to Matt Kelly around the end for a big game before Anderson can stop him. But Carlisle had to know it was going to be a long night with the way Harding was stopping the Bison stud fullback Griffin Gallagher. The Bison scored first on special teams. Blade Ebbs picks up the punt. He will slip to the outside, scoot down the Carlisle sideline. And that tied it at six. A little later from the air, Harding goes to the air when Watson finds Anderson again for the score. Carlisle led 13 to 12 at the half and 19 18 in the fourth quarter, but Harding had too much Watson. He would pass for a single game state record, 535 yards, including five touchdowns, and the Wildcats likely earn a share of the conference title with a 13 point win at Carlisle. Final score Harding 32, Bison 19. The 5AA South Championship was on the line when Magnet Cove visited Boxside Friday night. Boxside quarterback Charlie Lawrence, he's had a big year, rolls out, gets pressured, then finds Damian Sal. It's good for a box site first down, and the Miners kept it going with Sal running hard over Magnet Cove. That run set up Bucksite's first touchdown, but Magnet Cove would answer with Vic Barrett's short pass to Jason Russell. Then Jason turns it into a big play. 59 yards. He ties the score at seven. Russell had a big night, and Barrett would finish with 222 yards passing. And this one had an exciting finish. The Panthers stopped Bucksite on a two-point attempt in the fourth quarter and claimed the number one playoff seed. Magnet Cove becomes only the second team in six years to win at the pit. Final score, Magnet Cove 14, Boxite 13. The mighty Barton Bears were in Hazen Friday night to take on the Hornets. We pick up action in the second quarter. This is Hazen's defense playing tough with Matthew Lisko. Look at Matthew stuff Barton's run, but it is hard to keep Coach Frank McClellan's wing tee in check all night. Barton's Courtney Winston puts in the score right here. That made it 36 to nothing just before halftime. Barton goes on to win, and this Friday night, the Bears will play host to Des Art to decide the six AAA conference. Conference Championship. It should be a classic. You know everybody in Barton and Des Arc will be there, and so will Hooton's Arkansas football cameras. Final score from Friday night, Barton 43, Hazen 0. From the Prairie in Hazen all the way down to the Pine Thicket in Gurdon, Hooton's Arkansas football was there Friday night when the Go Devils played host to the Murfreesboro Rattlers. And you've got to like the Go Devils' chances on Halloween weekend. Gurdon led 22-6 in the third quarter when Murfreesboro's number 12 at senior fullback Ryan Rather with a great block that makes room for Rattler tailback Josh Holcomb. Gurdon's poison included quarterback Colby Pace pitching to senior running back Rashawn Hobson. Thompson ran a 4-4-5 at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Pigskin Combine back in May. He is 6'3", 175, and college coaches know his name well. It was often easier for Pace to hand it to Rashawn than pass, though. That's Murfreesboro's senior tackle, Chris Wheeler, with the sack. The fourth quarter belonged to Gurdon's number 20, though. That's senior fullback Brandon Hatley. Brandon rushed for more than 700 yards last season, and he is having another great year. Final score, the Gurdon Go Devils, 28. The Murfreesboro Rattlers, 6. Our running backs, we have real good running backs. And the offensive line have really stepped up this year, and uh, we're going hose and the backs do their thing. Uh, tonight's game was a hard fall game. Uh, winning this game clinched us the third seed into the playoffs. And uh, I just got to say, the offensive line played hard, extremely hard. We're a young team. We only have six seniors. I mean, past game, go, go to every team has been nothing but a lot of seniors. But this year, we're young, but we're still expecting to go pretty uh, far ways into the playoffs. Shallow Christian is still on top of the double-A pole, followed by Hector Charleston. Junction City is up to number four this week, followed by Harding and Barton. Mineral Springs is number seven. There's Carlisle dropping to eight. Then it's Mayflower. Magnet Cove's in the top ten. Desert moves up to number 11, and Boxite's down to 12. Mark Tree's 13. Then it's Foreman, Mansfield, Gurdon at number 16, Smackover, Ryzen, Elkins, and the Clarendon Lions at number 20. Hi, I'm Alexis Weeks, and everybody at Benton's watching Hootons Arkansas football. Yeah, 
coming up next Sunday at 1 o'clock on Hooton's Arkansas Football. We'll have highlights of a whole lot of high school games, including these 5A matchups at Little Rock Central, Jacksonville, and Benton. Also, we will be in Arkadelphia, Greenbrier, and Fordyce on Thursday night. Plus, Hooton's Arkansas Football will take a trip this week to Bearden, Hot Springs Lakeside, and we will be there when Lake Hamilton plays at Hot Springs. Also, Hooton's Arkansas Football will be there when Barton and Desart decide the 6AA championship. Plus, we'll stop off at West Helena and Newport. And you can see highlights next week from Searcy, Russellville, and Dardanelle, along with Central Arkansas Christian, Little Rock Hall, and McClellan as Sheridan tries to finish with a winning record. Highlights of all those games, plus the Razorbacks next Sunday at 1 on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Time. Some let it... Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic, America's Drive-In. Regions Bank, a lifetime of financial solutions. Sitco, you know me. North Point Ford, North Point Lincoln Mercury, and the North Point Used Car Superstore. Sissy's Log Cabin, because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. First Baptist Church of Springdale, a church for all people. Prestige Toyota, buy anywhere else and you'll pay too much. First Security Bank Corp, innovative community banks. And by Arkansas Farm Bureau, come grow with us. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. Remember, next Sunday we're back on at 1 o'clock, and we hope to see you here. We'll have highlights from the Razorbacks and the Ole Miss Rebels from Oxford, plus high school football. The playoff pairings we'll be talking about next Sunday at this time. So we hope to see you back here next week at 1 o'clock for Hooton's Arkansas Football. come true.